Oh, he's done well from his oh. chemotherapy and he's, he's passing his checkups and he's staying away from people because his immune system is down. But right. you know, guys, Kevin, you've known me. You may have done this yourself. I was talking to Bobby about it. I've watched him do this. He's had concussions to where he's finished the match, done the finish, everything's been fine, and then had a meltdown in the locker room because he had no idea who he was, couldn't recognize his brother, would break out into tears for no reason and just cry uncontrollably. It's brain damage. And, yeah. you know, and and going back and looking back, at this, this guy had a number of horrible emotional upheavals in his life at during a year or so where it's obvious that he was going through brain damage. And the, the, the people have said, well, how could he remember his finishes? Well, I've just, I've watched guys who were finishing matches the way they were supposed to and had no idea what they were doing and didn't remember it afterwards. Mick Foley, bless him. Has done, Mick Foley came back from the King of the Ring, that a Hell in a Cell match, and asked me, said, did we do the thumbtacks? I said, yes, they're sticking in your fucking ass. <laughs> he didn't remember it. Um, yeah. so, so I guess what I'm saying is, is that in hindsight, people should have known, but in wrestling, a lot of strange things happen, and it's a lot of strange guys, but there's no... To me, it's it's not like a situation where you can't prove he, he was brain damaged and went insane because he could remember his match finishes. That's completely has nothing to do with it. Um, and now that we've heard what was going on, I guess what I'm trying to say is for all of these idiots that still to this day, you see them on Twitter. I don't know if they're trolls or whether it's nuts that bought your gimmick and you're really the Prince of Darkness instead of Ozzy Osbourne or whatever the fuck. It's so ludicrous, and, and it's ridiculous that you have to hear this. But for the people who say, well, Kevin Sullivan had something to do with it. He was in mysticism and the dark arts. And it, despite, it's like the people who think the Earth is flat, despite the fact that we've got pictures of it from out in space and it's fucking round, and all these other idiots... No, this thing was examined by the police up one side and down the other. Everything's been reported. Everything that can be known is known. And Kevin Sullivan was never anywhere near, had nothing to do with, or fucking uh, arranged in any way any activity related to this whole incident. I just wanted you to get on the record as saying that, and I agree with you. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it is ridiculous, and here's the thing. It's also hurtful to my children, you know, and it must be really hurtful. To, I've thought about this, Benoit's son and daughter, especially the son. He yeah. must have, he must have handled things like, good thing you weren't down there that weekend. You know what I mean? <sighs> I, the people are vicious because... They're not happy in their life. This was a horrible incident that happened. I mean, horrendous. It has, it has hurt a lot of people. And to keep digging it up, it isn't, you know, I'm at the point now, it's kind of like I'm a, when it first happened, it used to really piss me off. But now it's like water on a duck's back. But her parents have to hear this shit. And people, you know, like you said, Jimmy, I'm living down the Keys. Was I, so, like you said, some people thought I was uh, satanic, okay? So that means that The Undertaker's a dead man, that Ted DiBiase was the million dollar man. I mean, where can they not separate reality from fiction? That's, maybe it said that I, had studied my uh, personality so I could get it over like you did, Jimmy. That's what we're trying to do, get a absurd personality over that people could believe. You know what I mean? Yes. And you and, did and, so, you did well, you, it so you, well. I was going to say, you, you did it too well. You did it too well. So do I. People think I'm really crazy. I Little do they know I am. But 
but that's that's but, the thing is is that you specifically on purpose tried to blur the lines of of reality and fiction in your wrestling persona in order to get over and draw money and now that they know that everything about wrestling is complete horseshit they can read anything on the internet they know everything about wrestling is complete horseshit but they still believe that you were satanic and could have had something to do with this out of fucking you know revenge or or you know satanism or whatever yeah and uh you know it's just so bizarre and you and I have talked about this before, Jimmy, on different subjects. These people that are wrapped up in conspiracy theories on everything. Sigmund Freud once said, a cigar sometimes is just a cigar. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know, things happen, but how can you believe that somebody went... And not just me. It's not just that I'm the only one on conspiracy. Bill Apter said the Japanese mafia killed him. What? What? You're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's his. That's his conspiracy theory. The Japanese mafia killed him because he owed them so much money. So you got a hit squad of Japanese mafia that tattooed all over. Go in the house for three three days and escape without being seen. I mean, people make the damnedest uh, excuses. And I'll tell you why, and I can understand to agree. Brian, Jimmy, see if you agree with me. Chris Benoit had a unique quality in the wrestling business. He gave it his all. The people got their money's worth every time and more than their money's worth when they saw him perform. He was their hero. They can't wrap their head around that their hero and superior worker could absolutely do this because even though they don't believe in wrestling like you guys have said, it's almost like when I didn't believe in wrestling, but I thought the original Sheik was real. They want to believe that he was a hero. And he was most of his life. Yeah. But that's where I think the conspiracy theory comes in. Do you think what I'm saying has got something? Well, yeah, because they they just can't believe. And like a lot of us, obviously, we didn't go to the conspiracy theory, but a lot of us just couldn't believe that this guy could do what, he obviously did. And so they, right. their minds tune it out and there has to be more. There had to be something else. It couldn't be possible, but because if it, if you admit to yourself that this is what happened, then you have to admit to yourself, my God, how did this fucking guy do this? But, you know, right. but sometimes, you know, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a fucking duck, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Kevin, I, and, and I appreciate you doing this because I didn't want, as long as it's been 40 years now, I think I've known you, I didn't want people to think that you didn't participate in that program because you didn't want to, you wanted to make yourself look good or you didn't want to have to defend yourself or whatever. You didn't go to the funeral because you didn't want it to be a circus. You didn't, you right. haven't told these stories on a mainstream basis for almost 15 years now because you didn't want it to be a zoo because of your relationship with her parents and and you were a member of the family for longer than a lot of the other these other people that are actually being talked about in this story um and you know and I what, what's your relationship when's the last time you talked to Sandra about I'm gonna I'm gonna say a year and a half ago. Because, I mean, she said, did say some good things about you, and we're not trying to knock Sandra in this thing either. She said some good things about you on the show and on other programs. She said, oh, we loved we loved Kevin. Um, but I wanted to point out that I think that there was an element of Sandra that was buying part of the, the shoot angle as far as the 
fight in the backstage area. And, you know, let me ask you one more time, just blatantly. Sandra says you gave Nancy a black eye. Did you ever give Nancy a black eye? I never gave Nancy a black eye. Well, I, I just, the reason why I ask that again, and the reason why I'm wondering is Sandra, but Nancy went into business that at that time. I'm just trying to search for a reason how or a way that Sandra may have conflated some of these things because would Nancy have taken a bad bump or got bruised in a match or whatever that she would have seen and bought it if she bought the the bash at the beach angle. But, you know, the point is your story has not been out there and people have not heard you say these things or say I specifically never did this. And I think that's, that's something that they need to hear. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the timelines. Uh, I was in Japan. Jackie and I wrestled Chris Benoit and uh, Nancy Valade at the time of supposedly the Black Eye, but I was in my own hotel room. I don't know where Nancy was, but uh, Jackie was in her hotel, own hotel room. So... And as 15 years go by, timelines for people get skewed. But if you live listening to this for 15 years, your timeline's pretty right on. Now, Sandra, I think you brought it up best, you guys, that she bought the shoot that the work was a shoot and it wasn't. Uh, him supposedly popping my eardrum, I can remember that next weekend I was diving in the Keys at, uh, on a wreck that was in, I was in 87 feet of water. You couldn't have got down, you know, if you had Oh, gee, yeah. <laughs> your brain, your head would have exploded. Plus, so, you couldn't I have mean, gone up. You couldn't have gone in a plane anywhere either. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And here's the other thing. I don't think this was done maliciously. I don't think uh, anybody was trying to put me in a bad light maliciously. But I don't think the people that were involved, and rightfully so, they can't wrap their head around this. So, and the timeline as time goes on, it's still one of those things. How did this happen? And I think they start to try to be amateur sleuths and put this stuff together. And when they can't go from A to B to C, it to me to them it doesn't matter if it, T is after A as long as they get their yeah idea across. So. It's, you know, and I said to you earlier, I feel very strongly about the mother and father have to go through it daily. And, you know, people that I uh, know, respect, uh, and love have gone through this. So, I mean, it's, it's a hard thing for anybody. And I think everybody is trying to search for an answer. And the bottom line is, guys... We'll never know what really happened between them because the two of them are dead. Yeah. Well, I just, I appreciate you doing this today because I wanted, I saw you guys together, you and Nancy uh, in, in the day and, and know that you guys, uh, she adored you. You adored her. You guys were great. You, you guys were like everybody else on the planet earth, every other human being on the planet earth, you were happy with each other until you weren't. And that happens to everybody at one time or another, or most people. And, right. you know, and, and you can never, uh, you can't really take sides unless you've been there to referee the whole thing. And, and that's why a lot of people ought to err on the side of caution and just stay out of it. But I wanted people to know that, that I, it, it wasn't like, and I mentioned this to Evan and Jason and I'll stop on this subject, but I mentioned it to them when we had them on the program. I didn't want people who watched that program to get the, the, the thought that this was this long 
bad relationship that she was waiting for a way to escape from. No, you guys were perfectly happy.